Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring, brought to you today in association with Lemsip and Strepsils. Yeah, I'm feeling a little bit under the weather at the moment, so if my voice sounds weird, I know, my voice always sounds weird, but if it sounds even more weird than usual, that is why. But I wanted to do this video because my copy of Blackstone Fortress Escalation has arrived in the post and I'm incredibly excited about it. So we're going to break it open, we're going to have a quick look at it together, and then um, we'll take a closer look at the contents and things like that. Um, I've already taken off the shrink wrap, but that's as far as I have got. Let's go! By the way, for inquiring minds, the box is deeper than a Traitor Command box, and you could basically put two copies of Traitor Command side by side on the top in terms of size. So it is a much bigger product than the previous ones. Um, retail price is £65, but I got the um, the classic 20% online discount, so not too bad. Let's look inside. So first of all, we have our boards, shrink wrapped, obviously, and um, and look, with a corner pre-ripped for my convenience. I'm going to put the box to one side for a moment. Um, I know a bit about what's going on with this uh, this expansion, but not uh, not everything. But um, I will do my best to explain what stuff is as I take it out, unless I haven't got a clue what it is. That shrink wrap. So we've got four boards, and we have some lovely new terrain, which is oh, doing doing nothing for my uh, for my color blindness. Um, it's yeah, it's, it's suffering from the same issue as the the boards that came with the base game. Is that I find it very difficult to see the red outlines, and um. They've kind of, this one's got a red outline, but they've kind of put it on this sort of greeny, yellowy background. So that's even more difficult than usual. And, um, and, and, yep, yeah, there's, there's one there too. Um, and, oh, look at that. That's beautiful. And look, there are many skulls. Uh, many skulls and a, a corn symbol from a slightly odd angle. And um, a bubbling witch's cauldron of gloop. Um, yeah. Oh, that's actually that's actually two boards. I thought that was one big chamber, but it's not. Look at that. They pop out really cleanly, really nicely punched, nicely done. Um, yeah. My only complaint is, like I say, the um, I mean, like that, that outline over that red is it's not working for me guys but there we go um so we've got some boards how many of these are boards um map tiles two of them are map tiles so it looks like we've got um and and obviously yes they're they're double-sided rock on yeah throwing up the devil horns there um, that's very cool. Look at that. That's really nice. And that's, um, and that's, what is that? That, that popped out quite nicely as well, but that is two. They split there and there. And, um, um, and that is, <laughs> um, suitably phallic. <laughs> Or it's a stick man. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, maybe I've had one too many lem sips. Other cold and flu remedies are available. That's really interesting. That's that's a that's a really cool, interesting shape. Um, I can see some fun times ahead fighting round corners and things. And there's a few more skulls there for good measure. Very pretty boards. Very, very very good artwork. Um, I do like the artwork on the boards. Like I say, I have problems with the um, with the red, but other than that, it's just nice looking stuff. 
Um, the third board is we've got some tokens, we've got some overlays, um, we've got some some symbols and whatnot, different tokens. Um, that is that looks like the servitor. The the um, there's a retinue character in this expansion who isn't actually a playable hero, but is like an ally. Um, which is actually um, a mechanism lifted from Shadows Over Hammerhull where you could have like um, a Griff Hound and then they expanded on that in a copy of uh, White Dwarf magazine where they put some extra rules in where you could actually go to town and hire an assistant and, and the assistant was um, like a stripped down version of a hero so they had abilities and skills and things like that but um, they, they couldn't progress in the same way that a regular hero could and you had to pay for them. Um, this new idea of a retinue character seems to be following along those lines. Um, and yeah, that looks like him sat in a crater waiting to be found. And um, that's, that's a thing. It's like a creepy token for some description. Um, yeah, I don't know what a lot of these tokens and things do. Like I say, I know bits and pieces of what's going on with the expansion, but not everything. I know what this thing is on the last board. This is the Menace Tracker, and I don't just know that because it says Menace Tracker on it. This is a thing that you attach to the bottom of your precipice board, and as you are playing through the expansion, the threat escalates. It's the Escalation expansion. And as the threat escalates, you attach extra tokens to the bottom here. And um, this is very nice um, in, uh, in terms of the graphic design. Because not only does it say 1, 2, 3, and 4. And not only does it say 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the tokens do show you what happens as the threat escalates. So at the first... Uh, step it's minus one to reinforcement rolls so it's more likely the bad guys are going to turn up here it's a cumulative minus one to reinforcement rolls and minus one resource card at the ships on precipice and this continues on and on and it's because um laser beams are being fired from blackstone fortress at precipice and precipice is coming under attack and you can see the laser beams and not only is there uh, is the numbering going up, but the number of laser beams increases to match the numbers. So at two, there's two extra laser beams. At three, there's three extra laser beams. Um, and and yeah, and so on. So that's that's a nifty little bit of graphic design uh, to uh, to match the numbering. And then we also get two new ships. Um, obviously, when you get new heroes in. Blackstone Fortress, they come with a bunch of stuff because new heroes uh, may come with new with, on new ships because there are, there's always a ship associated with a particular hero. In this case, we get two new ships. I will look at the ships in detail when I look at the heroes and we know which heroes come with which ships and things like that. But yeah, so it's an another, another opportunity to have uh, different um, skills available because obviously each ship, when you... Um, when you go into the Blackstone Fortress, has a skill that is accessible um, if you've got an associated hero. So picking your heroes also allows you to pick your supporting skills. And of course, there will be a whole bunch of resource cards in this expansion as well, because when you go back to Precipice, you can go shopping at the ships and each ship has its own deck of resource cards available. So adding a new hero to Blackstone Fortress actually does quite a few things. It adds obviously a new miniature, it adds a new uh, hero card, it adds a new ship, it adds a new deck of resource cards. Um, and it also has to add in a few other utility things as well. Like it needs to include some extra death cards because there's more heroes that can die. Um, it needs to include the relevant initiative cards for when you're working on the initiative tracker. So um, it's a little bit more of a, a a chore I guess to add a hero to Blackstone Fortress and it might be in some other games where you literally just have a miniature and hero board and that's it you're done um, the way they've designed Blackstone Fortress each new hero comes with some extra baggage unless you can kind of explain them away f as being already on one of the existing ships or whatever but as soon as you introduce a new ship you're introducing new resource cards and things like that so it's kind of like a, an escalating thing but anyway, those are the tokens. 
Um, and my voice is getting worse. Next up, we have our books and things. I'm going to put those to one side for a moment um, because underneath we have the plasticky goodness. We have the bases and um, this expansion comes with 13 miniatures um, which already look like they've been apportioned off for selling at a later date individually. This guy's on his own frame. This is the, uh, the firebrand. I think they're calling him. He's the leader of the cultists. He has a ruddy great big flame weapon. I'm going to put this to one side so we can have a look at him without all that red stuff happening behind him. Um, it's a very cool looking miniature. I've obviously seen it assembled and painted. Um, I'm going to do a separate video, um, like I say, for um, uh, showing these guys assembled because there's, there's quite a few miniatures. And what I've done with previous expansions is I've sort of cut away very quickly, assembled them and, and come back and shown you the finished things. But for now, um, I'm just going to show them on the sprue and we will get to assembly later. Um, they are push fit. Um, as the base game miniatures are um, but I will be using glue because um, I just think I would rather have things glued together especially if I'm painting them every now and again push fit models that might come a little bit loose or a bit might fall off so you know might as well slap a little bit of plastic glue in there but anyway that's the firebrand and then underneath that we have the frame in glorious red um, for all of the new heroes um, and yeah, color coded in the same way as the base game. So bad guys are gray, uh, good guys or as good as you can get in 40k are in red. And we get four new characters and that retinue character. Now, this is not the only way to get this frame of miniatures. Uh, these same miniatures were available uh, for the game Combat Arena, which is a reskin of Gore Chosen. And if you're only interested in getting these miniatures then and and you live in one of the areas where combat arena is available because basically it was a uh, one of those barnes and nobles exclusive type things i think you can basically get it in america and some places in germany uh but if you can get hold of combat arena that's going to be your cheapest way to get hold of this sprue of miniatures because combat arena is actually cheaper than this expansion but um, cool characters. I am particularly fond of the uh, the Crusader with the uh, the power shield and the power sword, and he's just going to be my number one pick basically from here on out. There is only one more frame of miniatures, and these are our cultists. And um, someone said uh, the other day they they look like a, a, a reject cult from uh, Necromunda. And they do a bit because uh, these guys really give me that old Goliath ganger feel because uh, I used to play Necromunda back in the day and I actually had the metal Goliath miniatures and just the loadouts on these guys. I mean, they've got a, a heavy stubber there and they've also got somewhere on this frame. I know because I've seen it assembled. They've got, ah, there it is there it is it's a grenade launcher so they've got a grenade launcher they've got a heavy stubber and then they've got um uh auto guns and stuff like that um and it just very much reminded me of the goliath boys that i used to have back in the day um and someone's got a got a chainsaw there with a extra hooky bit at the end because chainsaws clearly weren't nasty enough without having an extra hooky bit on the end um, and that's it for your miniatures. Now, obviously, there is um, a, an issue. A, an issue has been raised uh, numerous times about the pricing of Escalation. It is quite steep. Uh, it, like I say, it's sixty-five pounds um, retail before you apply your discounts or whatever else. And yeah, that is quite a lot. Um, there's a couple of reasons um, why that pricing is the way it is. Um, and I do think that when you're opening the box and you look at the contents that you're getting, it may feel a little bit like you're not getting very much for your 65. Um, there's a few more things in the box I'm going to show you in a moment, but I'm off on a tangent now. Um, anybody who watches any of my videos will know that I will do this from time to time. But anyway, I'm talking about pricing apparently. I'll carry on until my voice gives out. Um, yeah, there's a few reasons why the price is going to be what it is. I mean, first of all, 
Um, Games Workshop actually announced um, the pre-orders this weekend for Aeronautica Imperialis, the the uh, new air, air aerial combat game. Um, and that base set for that game is actually only £55. So it's like £10 cheaper than this expansion, which is a pretty good price, actually. Uh, especially once you get that discount again. But yeah, there's a couple of reasons why the price is what it is. One is obviously expansions are always more expensive than base games. Um, that's just the way it is. Um, base games sell in larger quantities um, so they can afford to sell them for a cheaper price. And also base games are what hook you in. So you get a slightly better deal on your base game and then expansions are a little bit more expensive. Um, that's part of it. Um, part of it is also um, this box is labeled all over with manufactured in the UK. So obviously um, UK manufacturing prices um, do push the price up on, on different kits and things like that. Personally, I am happy to pay more for products that are manufactured in the UK. I like to support a UK manufacturing, obviously being from the UK. Um, so, but yeah, that's gonna, gonna push the price up a little bit. Um, but also the, the thing that I'm, I'm looking at here and what I'm noticing is that it's it's quite a mixed media in the box. We've got um, the sprues of miniatures, um, there's the thick cardboard punch outs, there's several books, it looks like we're getting at least three books, we'll have a look at those in a moment. Um, there is, and this is what m m caused me to go off on my tangent, there's a big envelope, a, a big sealed envelope. Now, in every expansion and in, the, and in fact in the base game as well, um, when you complete the mission, there is a sealed envelope that you can open that will um, change the game slightly. It's kind of like a mini legacy type aspect that you get a secret bonus that when you complete that mission, you can open up and then you have access to that bo the bonus content for the rest of your games. Um, normally it comes in a little envelope, but this time it's coming in a big envelope. So I'm very interested to know what is inside that. Um, if you want to know more about this this concept of this this legacy type aspect, um, I have done videos previously looking at um, the expansions and how they work and how they integrate with the base game and and what kind of persistent effects they can bring to your to your overall gaming experience. And the uh, the secret envelopes are one of those things. But yeah, um, having things like um, different sized envelopes that have got to be printed independently and, and sealed, and then there's different things that have to be filled inside. Um, all that sort of stuff. And then I can see that we've got um, cards in multiple different sizes. We've got at least three different sizes of cards there. And also, um, as I mentioned earlier, when you get a new hero in this game, it comes with a little bit of extra baggage. And um, literally, in this case, it comes with a little bit of extra baggage because it comes with more stasis wallets um, for keeping track of your extra heroes and things. Because one of the things about Blackstone Fortress is that you don't really get an allocated hero as such. You can switch between heroes. Every time you go back to Precipice, you can pick a new hero, but you still need to keep track of the hero's um, current status and that's why you need these envelopes. And of course, then you've got to, got to make a different type of plastic wallet and print that up as well. So um, there's quite a lot of things here that, that can cause production prices to increase. It's like once you start making secret envelopes that you have different things you have to put inside and then seal it down and you've got all the different mixed types of uh, materials in the same box. So um, not in any way, um, uh, giving them a free pass on the price of this expansion. 65 pounds, I'm not gonna lie, that is a steep price. Um, like I said, I managed to get the 20% discount and was overall relatively happy with that. Um, and also, if it's a choice between paying slightly higher prices to get content for Blackstone Fortress or not getting content for Blackstone Fortress, I'm gonna play the slightly high, pay, pay the slightly higher prices, that's just, the way it is, I love this game and I want to keep expanding it. And and all it means in the long run is I have a certain um, a certain gaming budget available to me. And if I buy one of these products, it just means I take a little bit of the budget away from something that I might have bought for something else. And it just means that other products that Games Workshop release, I may um, pass them by. It's just a decision process that I have to make. Um, but yeah, so there is a lot of different things going on in the expansion which can sort of explain away some of that pricing. But anyway, I've gone off on one there. So yeah, uh, 
plasticky wallets. Secret envelope. I'm not going to open it because I don't want to know what's in there until I've completed the campaign. And then it's actually some in the in the bottom of the box. There's some some plastic grippy on, on wallets, um, grippy bags. Games Workshop do that sometimes, but then not at other times. Um, and then we have a thing of cards. We have. Um, I'm. Oh, yeah. Bef before we before we go any further, uh, minor spoiler storyline spoiler coming up, which I've just noticed. Um, uh, sorry, it kind of sort of flashed up on camera. Um, you may have spotted it, um, but. Um, for the next 30 seconds, um, I'm going to spoil something which is related to the story. Um, I'll put a timestamp down below so that you can skip ahead past this if you don't want to know. But, spoiler, uh, minor spoiler, it's, it's something that Games Workshop has discussed multiple times if you've been reading the um, the things, uh, the, the pre-release announcements. But, spoiler, here, now. Obsidious Malax isn't dead. Look, he's back. He's back and he's badder than ever. He has been upgraded. Um, basically, he has been revived by the Blackstone Fortress and actually has gained some kind of control over the Blackstone Fortress, which explains why the uh, the new campaign for this expansion is ever so slightly different. Um, we'll take a, a closer look at him another time. Um, but yes, this will be where the spoiler ends. Um, so that's cool. And then we have got, um, we've got our cultist firebrand, our cultists. I'm going to take a closer look at these, um, in another video, but I'll, I'll hold for a few seconds just so you can see what's going on there. But the cultist firebrand, who is, who is pretty brutal at range two to three, he's gonna, gonna lay the smack down. And he has... He has five wounds. Um, that's good to see. A lot of a lot of um, a lot of characters are quite low on wounds and can go down under sustained fire relatively easily, having a few extra wounds. Um, certainly not making him massively powerful with only five wounds, but certainly a little bit more robust, a little bit more of a, a bullet sponge than he might otherwise have been. Certainly more so than these cultists that only have two wounds each. But anyway, like I say, we'll look at those another time. And then we have, this is our retinue character. He's got a a slightly different type of card. Interesting. He's got X101. He's still got his, his abilities and stuff, but he's got a, a, a different set of features here. And he still gets an inspired side. And then we have our four new heroes. We have my new number one man, Gottfried de Montbard, the Crusader. Um, cool. We have Aradia Madeline, the Primaris Psyker. And like I say, I will go through their abilities and things in another video because this video is getting really long and I've still got stuff to show you. Uh, we have Daedalosus, the Techno Archaeologist. Um, techno Archaeologists, the guys that go rooting around. Um, and find out stuff and find blueprints and things and then make cool new weapons kind of like um, the guy who uh, who invented the land speeder and the land raider and stuff like that and we have Nayam Shai Murad another rogue trader this is our second rogue trader for the game um, she has a, a very cool um, twin twin pistol thing going on and i don't know if you can see it in the picture there but she's got the um the servo skull is actually dropping a bullet into her pistol which is very cool um so obviously she's firing the guns and then she just cracks them open and then she's got got two servo skulls that just reload them for her it's very cool um you may have noticed two of these characters are female so that's that's quite nice to have because there's not um, a lot of female characters in the base game. I think there's there's only one female hero in the base game. So that's another two female heroes, um, two cool looking female heroes as well. Especially, uh, you know, we've got a, a 
twin pistol wielding uh, rogue trader and then this psyker is a female i believe um and actually some of the uh the cultists are also female so yeah we're, we're seeing a little bit more representation uh for people um i know there's a lot of gamers and things if they're gaming with uh, you know with mixed groups they, they everyone likes to have I mean, it's never bothered me personally. I'm quite happy that we'll play with, with male or female characters. Um, but some people do like to specifically have a character that matches their their own gender. And and that is, you know, now a little bit easier to do if you have, have uh, three female characters to pick from. So that's nice. Um, what else is in here? We've got some encounter cards. So these will be the cards that... Um, that uh, will uh, allow you to uh, get into combats with the new cultists and the firebrand and whatever else. Um, and then we have obviously our initiative cards. Like I said, every new hero comes with some baggage. So we've got, got Daedalus, Aradia, Madeline, Gottfried de Montbard, and Nayam Shaimurad. Ooh, all names that I have mangled horribly, and um, I'm looking at me, looking in me box, and and hold on, I was gonna say that looks like it, but it's not. There's some cards under there, um, and there's a death card because um, you need to have a death card, at least one death card per hero, so that if they die, you can. Stick him in a wallet with a death card and say that character is not available for this campaign anymore. Um, let's crack these open. So what have we got here? We have got, uh, we have got, we have got, we have got four death cards because death, death. Did I say death cards? Death cards. I've got death guard on the brain. I do love those maggoty little fellas. And then we've got, um, oh. I don't want. I don't want to reveal those cards on camera because there's, there's, look, chaotic powers. Talking, talking of death guard, that particularly nergly looking thing, isn't it? Um, yeah, four of those. And um, I flicked them over and looked at them off camera, um, and they're the same on both sides. They're cool artwork. They're really good. I like that artwork a lot. Um, but yeah, four of those. Beautiful. Um, this is something else, obviously, that um, bumps the price up of a product is uh, unique artwork. Lots of unique artwork. Um, these are all resource cards. How many resource cards? Many. Um, and then we have chamber cards. Um, we'll look at the resource cards in a moment. So we've got chamber cards. I don't know what chamber cards are. Um, I'm going to look at one off camera. Um, they appear to be combat maps. Um, I'm not going to show them on camera for spoiler reasons, but each of those cards seems to have a combat map layout using um, some of those new boards that we have in this particular expansion. And then we have resources. Um, obviously, these will be the resources that are available on the new ships. What I'm going to do is when I look at the heroes in more detail, I will look at the ships and I will look at the resources that are available on those specific ships. So we will go through that in another video. But yes, that is a nice new stack of resource cards. Um, and that's uh, that's uh, uh, something that I really like in, in dungeon crawling games is lots of variety with weaponry. And um, it's interesting as well that because resources are tied to a specific ship and ships are tied to a specific character um, you don't always get an opportunity to get access to every resource in the game so if you regularly play with the same set of characters you don't get access to all these resources and then when you swap a character out suddenly you get access to a whole new bunch of resources um, it keeps things fresher a little bit longer I think because um, you don't sort of accidentally run across stuff um, before before you really wanted to get access to it um, 
but yes yeah, nice to see a big new bunch of resource cards because um, being able to customize your character with resources and things like that is it's a really fun part of dungeon crawling for me um, particularly as um, a lot of the resources are one shot use or limited use in some way you can use them once per combat um, so each of these cards represents a decision point at some point uh, it, the, you, when you're having a fight um, if you use that resource card and it's one you discard uh, after you've used it it's an important decision you don't just make that decision lightly whereas with resources that stick around forever with like a oh i've got a new sword and i can use it forever that's just a flat basic upgrade to your character which i don't find particularly um appealing or interesting i like i like every new thing i get to be a decision later down the line um, and to have something that offsets it and if the loss of that item is obviously the easiest way to offset the use of a, a powerful weapon but yes we will look at those another time Finally, we have our books. Yeah, so we have three books in total. I lied, we have four books in total. One of them is obviously our Blackstone Fortress Escalation Building Instructions. No glue required, but I do recommend it. Uh, Games Workshop's Build Instructions are great. Um, these push fit miniatures look like they're relatively straightforward and yeah they're using a, a system that they've used you know to good effect with previous model ranges um these m models are quite detailed again they have got the, the little fiddly details um particularly um the, the rogue trader with the, the pipe work and everything going all off of her there's a lot going on on that miniature it's very cool though and she has like a spiky peg leg. She reminds me of the uh, the elf corsair, uh, the the pirate from Shadows Over Hammerhorn, which is no bad thing. Um, and then obviously the cultist on the back. So yes, we have that. And then we have data sheets. The data sheets are for forty k. Therefore, using your new cultists and heroes in 40k between these traitor command and the uh traitor guardsman in the base game i've got quite an interesting little uh, attack force of chaos renegades now um but yes so there you go there's a cultist firebrand they have the uh Servants of the Abyss faction keyword, same as uh, the guys from the base game. Auto guns, grenade launchers, heavy stubbers, stub carbines, chainsaws, frag and crack grenades, and bad attitudes. Then we have Escalation, the ongoing battle for the Blackstone Fortress. And so this is our introduction to the new expansion and how it all works. I will be going through that at a later time to, to go through exactly how it works and what you can expect. Because this was supposed to be a quick unboxing and I do apologize. I've been banging on. There is a X101 and Daedalusus about to uh, grapple with some spindle drones. I'm still looking forward to seeing more stuff from the uh, the native creatures of the Blackstone Fortress. I think there's still plenty of scope for monsters and robots and robotic beasties. Um, here's our new arrivals. And stuff about heretic cults. There we go. And uh, an escalation reference chart on the back there. We'll go through that in more detail. And finally, we have the exploration book, which is 
quite a weighty tome. It is 40 pages. Um, so this is, you read this when you start the quest for the Black Shrines. This is full of spoilers. I am not going to spoil any of this in this particular video. I will talk about exactly how it works in another video, but check it out. It's got a map thingy on the back because um, the big bad in this game, uh, in this expansion, has learned to control the Blackstone Fortress because as we know up till now the Blackstone Fortress has been constantly changing and reconfiguring itself and no pathway is there twice in a row um, things are always moving around the maglevs are always taking you to different places and confusing you and disorienting you um, but now you're in a stable area of the fortress and you can actually map your route through it um, I am immediately thinking it would have been really nice um, for the price that you pay for the expansion um, I would say somewhat expected to uh, have included some separate sheets from this I mean it does say it says here permission to photocopy for personal use thanks Games Workshop I really appreciate you giving me permission to photocopy this so that I don't have to scribble all over my books but it would have been nice for them to have included a couple of sheets um, you know, I, it's not the end of the world to have to photocopy things, but um, I, th I feel like it could have could have had had that included. Even if you're, only, I mean, I guess maybe they're working on the basis that you're only going to do this mission once, but you probably won't. I mean, if you love Blackstone Fortress, at some point you're going to go back and play through it all again. So, you know, it wouldn't have killed them to have included a little pad. Even if it only had like 10 sheets in it or something, um, I would have liked to have seen that. I think that would have been... A nice gesture and oh look there's those spindle drones again um, but anyway I think I have talked for long enough I'm obviously very excited about this product so I've, I've banged on for longer than I probably should have done but I hope you find this um, this look uh, this initial unboxing interesting I do appreciate that I've glossed over a number of things but there are more videos to come I'm going to go away now and I'm going to assemble the miniatures and then we can have a proper look at them assembled. Um, we'll go through the heroes and what abilities and things they have and what the ships they are on bring and what resources are available. And then I'm going to talk uh, a little bit more in detail about the mechanisms of this expansion, about how it works and then what is going to be available to integrate back into your base game. So um, plenty more to come. Um, bear with me. Um, and indeed, if you have already been bearing with me up to this point in this video, then you are absolute legends because I'm really just gabbling now. But thank you very much for sticking with me this long. And I do hope you will come back and stick with me again. Until the next time, everybody. Bye bye.